Welcome to Philadelphia. Fuck, our final Friday night this season has to be in this shithole of a town that is Philadelphia. Oh my, my. Well, either way, our first match pits Draz versus Benny. Draz, as always, has a chance to uh, overcome his losing streak. Will he be able to do it tonight? Odds are no, but Bendy is not a, the greatest wrestler here. So maybe, maybe Bendy can do it. I have no fucking idea. No idea whatsoever. But we'll see, we'll see. Draz can do it. If he doesn't, he will get, uh, he still gets a chance next week. So as I just mentioned earlier, this is the final Friday of this season of Let's Cross Wrestling League. The next season will start up in 2017. Hopefully, that one, will, that, that season will be a little bit more exciting, a little bit more story, a little bit more drama, and better arenas, and hopefully better sound. Fuck me. Like, I'm expecting Benny's sound, song here to fuck up his entrance theme. Let's, are you ready? You ready? Yep, yep, no sound at all. Fucking called it. Hopefully, this thing is a thing of the past next season. We'll find out. Either way, next week is our final pay-per-view and final show for this season and it is final blow and uh yeah that's the best i could come up with uh oh my voice just cracked i must be 12 years old again that was that was the best uh my voice my voice <laughs> fuck that was the best that my uh my stupid brain could come up with it was final blow since it is the final show it's kind of uh god my voice is shit tonight <coughs> it's um kind of a throwback to our first pay-per-view which is blow off. And in fact, we'll take place in this same arena. Our humble beginnings will come back again to our uh, arena here before next season where hopefully we'll have the budget to go fucking crazy. But as I said, next, next Friday, we have final blow. The card has already been set for final blow. We already know what the matches are gonna be like. Draz is ready. Benny's ready. Uh, and you guys better be ready. Um, as I said, uh, Draz will actually get to fight against Captain for Draz versus Captain number three in order to hopefully snap his losing streak. Benny, oh Jesus, what a fucking spitch slap there by Draz. Benny, on the other hand, will be in an elimination tag match, pitting him, Oelji, and Hood Fabulous against the team of KTD, Anonymous Jerkbag, and Taxi. So that will kick off our show next week in an elimination six-man tag. Three men, well, I guess three men on one side, two men and a woman on the other side, and that's next week. But right now, Benny just clotheslined the ever-living shit out of Draz and took his fucking head right off. Benny, though, throwing in a punch to the gut and the head right there. Draz a little bit dazed, and now Benny going straight for the head. But Benny was shot out of a fucking cat, and he does not want to be the first person to lose against Draz. I mean, who the fuck would? Benny definitely doesn't, and Draz looks like he is just about helpless here. He got that first bitch slap, and I don't know if that woke up Benny. Maybe that, that pissed off Benny. But either way, Benny's just throwing down on Draz. Now lifting him up here. What can he be going for? Draz, though. Oh, Draz is able to shuffle around and actually get a hold of Benny here. It looks like going for a snap suplex, and he hits it. So Draz now back in this all of a sudden. So Benny's got to be careful to make, to make sure, again, like I said, he's not the first to lose to Draz. That would be humiliating. Though, now, now, though right now, Draz does have control, but not anymore as Benny shoves him down with his feet. Benny turns Draz over for a second there, but Draz is able to reverse whatever Benny was going to go for there. Now Draz going for a scoop slam. Benny gets out of the way, throws in a punch to the back of the head. Benny now hits a snap DDT on Draz. By the way, it should be mentioned that all um, main active wrestlers will have a match next week at our pay-per-view. There's a few uh, individuals that don't have matches. Um, mostly... Uh, People like Joe Burr and the such. And now Benny actually going for a pin here. Almost steals it there. Only a two. But all of our main roster uh, 
wrestlers will have will be in some sort of a match in some capacity next week for our final show of the season. Benny now in trouble here as Draz has him with his noodle arm putting on the biggest, mightiest headlock that his little heart can muster. Benny, though, says, your heart's not enough here, motherfucker, and gets out of it, and now throwing elbows into the bread basket of Draz. And a drop kick takes down Draz as well. Benny, uh-oh. He wants his, his last Friday match to go out with a bang as he's getting the table ready here for Draz. We'll see if anything happens. We, we've seen this many times before, and usually nothing, nothing happens, One. but we'll see here. Benny looks like he's determined, though. Throws Draz into the table. Doesn't uh, get Two. much out of it there. Draz just kind of teeter-tottering. Benny finally Three. throws Draz against the table properly here. But, oh, no. Draz able to reverse out of it just in time to not be uh, victimized into that table. Four. Oh, and what the fuck that was? I have no idea. But Benny uh, kind of made it happen. The anticipation. Oh, no. We're up to a five count. So Benny had to get back in the ring. Six. That was the longest cock tease we've had with the table. My balls are blue with anticipation, and unfortunately, they'll have to stay that way. Draz drops Benny on his knee, and now turns him over. Not sure what Draz is going for, but it didn't do anything. But oh, he's able to get hit a snap uh, onto Benny. Fuck, I can't remember the name of it. Back body drop. Yeah. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with Benny? He's getting punched in the head by Draz. Uh oh, Draz! Looks like he's getting his dumb noodle punch ready. And there it was! Decking Benny! Draz pulling Benny away. He could get it right here. This could be the first time he wins in his whole career. One, One two, two, three. No! Benny's able to kick out. Draz has to feel that sadness and disappointment one more time. Benny grabbing the leg of Draz and hitting a dragon screw takedown. And uh-oh. Now Benny looks like he's taunting. He's getting the crowd nice and pissed off. And he's going to go for that hop, scoop, shoot, shoot the hoop elbow drop one more time. Might be enough to end Draz. We're going to find out right here. Get down, ref. One, two, three. It's over, Draz. Still... A giant fucking loser and has yet to win a single match in Let's Cross Wrestling League. Will that change next week when he has Captain ZM for the third time? Captain has beaten Draz twice now. But it's I think it's probably Dra Draz's best hope at ever snapping this losing streak of his. I mean my heart, I hope I hope he's able to do it. I hope he's able to do it, but I gotta say, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna put any money on it, all right? Either way, here was the closest that Draz has come. Look how close this is. One, two, look at the hands coming down, and oh my god, so close. Benny almost just fucked it hard right there. And now Benny, showing everybody what he's got, goes off the ropes, does a little thing, shoots the basketball, and it comes right down on the chest of Draz knocking the air and wind out of his throat. Uh, either way, that's it. Three, it's done. Benny wins it over Draz. And now, coming out to the ring, uh, they are Space Tomato, uh, they are Grubbins, and they are with Butler Joe. They are the 1%. This is the first time they've let Butler Joe come out with him as a manager. So, bully for them. Uh, that was gay. Either way, they are coming down to ringside. Oh, Butler Joe almost got laid out by Grubbins there. Grubbins doing his little pre-match dance. Tonight, they have a hell of an obstacle in front of them. They have the two largest athletes, leaks, athletes in the Last Cross Wrestling League. They've got brute force and Skyrim jobs. Now, the 1% has had issues with two, both of those men as of late. Uh, Butler Joe being absolutely decimated by Skyrim Jobs last week. I'm surprised he's come out here even, but he is on the clock. Anyway, these two uh, knuckleheads have to go against, like I said, the two biggest men here. Um, 
I have a feeling Skyrim jumps and brute force are starting to get along, which is very scary for the rest of the Last Cause Wrestling League. Um, especially if they decide to continue to team up here. As far as I know, they're not an official team at the moment, but they both have a hatred for the 1%, and therefore have no problems teaming up. And here comes one half of those men, and I can't, I, don't, I, I feel bad even saying he's half of anything, as he's probably the size of three men. He is Skyrim Jobs! And he, and he has his shot at the Let's Crosby Wrestling League title against Scaife at final blow. Uh, the 1% meanwhile will face the Iron Dogs yet again at final blow. Because why the hell not? So Skyrim Jobs, this is kind of a, um, it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's a speed bump on the way to final blow. He de definitely has bigger things that have to be on his mind. Looks like Tomato almost refusing to get out of the ring. Need Tomato remember that Skyrim Jobs absolutely destroyed him. I think it was, I'm not sure, I think it was Skyrim Jobs' debut. No, maybe not his debut, but one of his early matches was against Tomato. And Tomato was flattened like a dumb little pancake. Either way. I have no idea how this match is going to turn out. And now his partner, who has no music. This has to be work of Butler Joe. He is a, also a former Let's Cross Wrestling League champion. At uh, final blow in a week, he's in a six-man Hell in a Cell match for the hardcore title. It'll be whoever uh, is the champion at the end of tonight. Versus Nil, Draven, Steve Butabi, Brute Force, and Thule. And Hell in a Cell, first person to get a pin, will be the hardcore champion. So again, Brute Force has other things on his mind, but maybe not. I don't know that he cares that much about titles. I think he just cares about getting in there and inflicting pain. This seems to be the perfect profession for him. Um, since he's allowed to come in here and beat the ever-living shit out of everybody that he comes in contact with. But tonight, like I said, very scary team that we have here of Skyrim Jobs and Brute Force. The 1% definitely need to be on their game tonight. Looks like it's going to start with Tomato against Skyrim here. And the referee's signaling the bell. Skyrim grabbing Tomato right away. And it looks like going to lift him up for a T-bone suplex. Just throws Tomato like he's a, a little child with all the might that he can. Skyrim Jobs taking the boots now to Tomato. Tomato able to arm drag Skyrim Jobs down here and then throws his head hard against the mat. Tomato trying to grab onto Skyrim Jobs. Skyrim Jobs is shoving him down with almost little effort. Skyrim Jobs now lifting Tomato up in a reverse suplex, planting him hard on the mat. I don't know if Tomato already wants to go tag his partner in, but we'll see. I mean, we've got three super, another one, Jesus. We've got three super heavyweights here in this match. And then we have Grubbins, but Grubbins, like, like I've said before, he has an incredible wrestling technique. Tomato finally getting in this and slamming Skyrim Jobs down, showing that he has some strength as well. But anyway, as I was saying, um, Tomato and uh, Grubbins has, have shown to be a good team. So despite the fact that, like I was saying, uh, Brute Force and Skyrim Jobs are such a gigantic team, you know, not only in size, but in skill. The 1%, despite all of their cheating and, and manipulative ways, buying their way into a good record and all this kind of thing. They are actually a good team and they're good wrestlers. It, like I said, it's just a shame. They feel that they have to cheat and manipulate their way into titles and title shots. But we'll see if that works against the team of Skyrim Jobs and Brute Force here tonight. 
I have a feeling it's gonna be take a little bit more than that. Jesus Christ, Skyrim Dub just flattened Tomato again. Brute Force now gonna get his turn to uh, beat the shit out of Tomato, unless Tomato can get over to Grubbins quicker than Brute Force can get to him, and he cannot. As Brute Force punches, and oh no, Brute Force actually dumped out of the ring by Sky or by uh, Tomato. Tomato using the opportunity to quickly tag in Grubbins. Grubbins now. Oh, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. I know something was going to go on. And now Grubbins oh, was not able to really get in this fast enough as Brute Force grabs Grubbins right away. Irish whips him back toward Tomato, lifts him up, and then just drops him right on his face in the middle of that ring. Grubbins, though, able to reverse, taking down Brute Force, and throws in a punch. And now slams his head down on the mat. I would say of the 1%, Grubbins is probably the uh, most talented of, the, of, of wrestlers in their group. Uh, he was former uh, Let's Cross the Wrestling League champion. Tomato was former US title. So all these men very well accomplished here uh, in this match. I mean, Butler Joe doesn't count. He's not in the match. But all four of these men have had their way in the in, with titles and, and everything. So this is an all-star caliber match here. And Jesus Christ, Grubman's shown that he does belong in that category, taking down the big man and now mounting, punching. Not sure how much damage he's doing there against that uh, hockey mask, but he's going to try nonetheless. Grubbins using his speed and technique over brute force here, going for a back body drop. He's able to nail it, holding on and almost trying to snap brute force in half. Grubbins now trying to pull the big man away and throws in a knee right to the head again. Again, you have to question how much damage is that actually doing? Grubbins, though, like I said, is in firm control. Turns brute force around here. And now hooks both arms and... Oh, I thought he was going to bridge that into a pin, but no, he just hits him with that double arm hook suplex, reverse suplex. I don't fucking know. There's a name for it. I don't know if it's like the tiger suplex. I think it's a tiger suplex. Uh-oh, brute force now. Oh, was, th was thrown into his own corner. Now thrown into that corner hard, actually. Oh, and not able to get the body body as Brute Force able to reverse. And now Brute Force tagging in Skyrim Jobs. Skyrim Jobs. Oh, wasn't able to do anything until Grubbins was able to grab him and hits him with a uh, Russian leg sweep. Like I said, Sky or like I said, Grubbins showing he's uh, definitely a skilled wrestler, but now he's tagged in Tomato, so we'll see how the match goes. Tomato, oh, able to capitalize, though, on Grubbins' work. Throws... Skyrim Jobs in the corner, but eats an elbow instead. He doesn't give up, though, and throws... Uh, and hits a big-ass big boot. Able to actually get his leg up there, which I'm surprised. And he took down Skyrim Jobs, and now Skyrim Jobs, the victim of a punch to the back of head, turned around, and uh, is being stuck. Whoop. Tomato teleported there and threw in a punch. I'm not sure teleportation's allowed, but the referee's gonna allow it. And, uh-oh. We might see the 1% rule here. No, Skyrim Jobs able to get out of that. And now, looks like he's gonna lift up Tomato Michael for some snake eyes here. And he drops him down, and he does, and looks like... Looks like Butler Joe is angry! He throws the steel steps off to the side out of anger. Wishing he would have seen the 1% rule up close. Now, Tomato... Actually... Oh, going for a choke slam here on Brute Force. Lifts him up high and slams him down! Color me surprised. He goes for a pin. No one's rushing in. There's a two count. And Brute Force able to kick out at two. Tomato now staring at Brute Force. Possibly in shock that he kicked out of the... Oh! Looks like Brute Force was going to go for that big clothesline. Tomato reverses that into a back body drop. Lucky for him. But now Tomato looks like he has no idea what the fuck to do. Oh, but he's... He wait, I guess he's just waiting. Oh, he takes a knee to the face. That's what hesitation will get you here in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. But be that as it may, Tomato's able to get Brute Force in the corner. Uh-oh, we might see a 1% rule here. Yeah, here it is. He's lifted him up. And there it is. That might be it. I doubt it, but it could be it. Grubbin's going for the pin, but Skyrim Job's already in the ring. It breaks it up before the ref can even get down to count. Looks like Tomato, though, taking exception to that grab Skyrim Job, turns around throws him out of the ring. Meanwhile, Grubbin's hitting a neck breaker on Brute Force. I gotta say, the, uh, the one percent, uh-oh. There's that big leg drop. The one percent showing they can get it done against this team of giants here. 
We get another two count as Brute Force is able to kick out. I'm, I'm a little shocked and impressed at the, uh, at the ability that the 1% is showing. I think Tomato just took out Skyrim Jobs on the outside as well. Unfortunately, we couldn't see what was going on there, but either way, Grubbin's up on the middle rope here, and it looks like he's going to, yeah, he hits the big fist right into the head of Brute Force. Grubbins lifts up Brute Force yet again here and throws him in the corner. Might be going for another 1% rule. Sure enough, it looks like they are. Grubbins... Oh, wow, somehow lifts up, and there it is. That's the second 1% rule that we've seen on Brute Force, but Skyrim Jobs again getting in and breaking it up before there's even a count at all. Skyrim Jobs showing that he is at least a competent tag team partner. What? Knowing that uh, Brute Force doesn't want to be pinned, he doesn't care about mercy. And now... Jesus, I was gonna say now Brute Force able to get around, but no, Skyrim or no, uh, Tomato actually has a sleeper hold on Brute Force. Meanwhile, Grubbins is actually taking down Skyrim jobs on the outside, but oh, what a jawbreaker there that Tomato just ate. Brute Force is now trying to figure out what he's gonna do. Misses a punch, but able to pick up Tomato, but Tomato squirms out of it and hits a back body drop right there. Tomato now. Throws it an elbow, keeping the big man down. That's odd to say, because he is also the big man. Brute Force able to reverse, throwing Tomato out. Now th brings him right back in. He probably... Uh-oh. He's signaling for something here, cutting the throat. Uh, apparently, the signal was to tag in uh, Skyrim Jobs. Well, that'll work. He definitely needed to. Skyrim Jobs slowly made his way over to Tomato. Throws Tomato up against the ropes. Oh, okay. Lifts him up. Spinning back body drop right in the center of that ring and then goes for a pin One, two. Got a two and uh, But it didn't work tomato kicks out <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was about either way Oh, it looks like scavenger is gonna go for that weird headlock But tomato was able to squirm out of it as we usually do see and uh oh tomato went for a punch But Skyrim jobs was able to get in close and catch him before it connected now Skyrim jobs has tomato against the ropes Throws Tomato clean over to the outside and follows him. Skyrim Jobs. Looks like he's lifting Whoa. up Tomato. I'm not sure what he's going to go for. Looks like he's he's got hold of him. That's for sure. Just throws Two. him up the ramp. Tomato takes a tumble and is down on the ramp. Three. It'd be interesting if we see the other guys get involved here. Tomato reversing into a jawbreaker there. And now throws Skyrim Jobs hard against the uh, safety rail there, but takes a kick to the stomach in return though he gets hold of Skyrim jobs again throws him back to the ring we're up to a five count and six. tomato throws in a uh, elbow and a big leg drop we were up to a six count he really needs to get into the ring tomato though kind of just staring at Skyrim jobs One. and oh okay the referees decided that right outside the ropes counts as coming into the ring which is odd but either way it doesn't matter Skyrim jobs now thrown up against the ropes here we might see another 1% rule. No, no, just a double team move. You gotta say, the double team moves have come solely from the 1%, showing at least, you know, they have, they are a tag team. They are very experienced at working together as a tag team. Um, and, and it shows. I mean, you have Brute Force and Skyrim Jobs who are not. Oh, here we go. This is that cheating shit I've told you about before. Two almost steals it there brute force was unable to get to him and they almost took it and Oles Grubbin's able to reverse out of that but takes a punch to the face anyway like I was saying I was trying to say the team of um oh oh I thought he's gonna go for a potato's edge there but no no Grubbin's Grubbin's is very good at getting out of moves he's very fucking good at squirming out of uh out of stuff and uh oh now now the two will have hold of Grubbins here. Look at him just dwarfing this big man or this little man and just, oh, just throws him hard up in the sky. And then goes for a pin. Meanwhile, One, two, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Skyrim Jones is like, hey, Tomato, you want to be part of this match? Here you go. And <laughs> takes him into the ring. One. But anyway, the point I was trying to make, though, was that Skyrim Jobs and Brute Force don't have much uh, experience tagging with each other or really anybody for that matter. So I think that's the big, big reason the 1% has been able to pretty well dominate this match. But of course, as I was about to make that point, 
the team of brute force and Skyrim jobs have definitely gotten back into this Grubbins now in in the corner at brute force's mercy here's a spoiler brute force has no mercy as he pulls uh as he as he pulls Grubbins away and mercifully pins him fuck me two. only a two count as Grubbins able to kick out Grubbins takes brute force throws him into the corner might be going for another one percent rule here nope just another uh, another double team move as tomato gets a cheap punch to the stomach here and uh oh might be going for a tombstone pile driver he is he's got him in the middle of the ring and he drops him right on his head he hooks the arms referee's gonna get in to count this one two and no oh skyrim jobs was just able to uh, break that up and throws Grubbins into the corner and gets out of the ring. Referee now counting Grubbins out here. He needs to get out before the count. Oh, Jesus Christ! There's that clothesline from hell onto Tomato. Goes for the pin. Almost gets it. And Jesus Christ. Grubbins gets thrown across the ring by Skyrim Jobs. Uh oh, and oh, now Skyrim Jobs has Butler Joe. And it's now Vicky Butler Joe part of this match for some reason throwing Butler Joe into the ring He needs to get the fuck out before the referee catches him and the referee does not turn around and see him Maybe that was Skyrim Jobs plan there to get the 1% disqualified. I have no idea I don't think it would but who knows what he's thinking either way tomato hits a big boot on uh, Brute force and then a leg drop right there It might be trying to set something up here for brute force. He certainly turns he turns him around here Going for the full Nelson choke slam and he nails every bit of it and then covers right away. Skyrim jobs unable to get Two, over. Brute for or three, brute forces pin. That's it. The one percent actually able to do it with minimal cheating. The one time they really tried to cheat, it didn't work out for them. And like I said, I gotta pin this on the fact that brute force and Skyrim jobs are just not a seasoned tag team, whereas the one percent is. All of almost all of the double team moves we saw here tonight. Were from the one percent, and they and they showed they flowed very well as a team. They they tagged in and out as they should have. Whereas brute force and Skyrim jobs, maybe both of them too used to being, you know, the big bad guy or not bad guy, but big monster in the ring, and not used to tagging out. But I think they gotta gotta if, if they're gonna stay as a tag team, they gotta get that out of their heads. That uh, a team is a team. And here is one of the two. Or three, um, yeah, three one percent rules onto brute force. Though that's not what ended up uh, ending it here. Neither was this. This was the whole setup. Or maybe this was. Yeah, this was what ended it. Tomato turned him over. He got him with the full Nelson choke slam, which is one of his signature moves. He pins him. Grubbins was able to get over before Skyrim Jobs could. And that was it. Finally, the one percent wins it. And a surprise, almost, I would say almost as an upset, but not really. They are a tag team. And they're celebrating with Butler Joe. And now it is time for Draven and Oelji to hopefully keep their clothes on while they roll around in the old chicken coop. Draven tonight has Oelji, but next week, like I said earlier, he's part of that Hell in the Cell hardcore title match. So he has a dangerous match, match, looming ahead of him. But Welgie, on the other hand, is part of that, like I said earlier, part of that elimination tag team match. So um, not as dangerous as a match that Draven's going to go into, but Draven does have a chance next week at Final Blow to end the season as the hardcore champion. So we'll see what happens. And now, with no music whatsoever... Because fuck me in the ass. He's a Welgie. He's got that little 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 cross there. It kind of jiggles around in some weird weird physics off of his off of his man boobs. He didn't really have man boobs. He's he he he's not he's got a little bit of a puffy physique, you know, but he's but he's full blown hundred percent Irish. And you can tell that by his red hair and his pale skin. And the fact he likes booze, likes to fight and eat potatoes. 
Now that we've offended the Irish enough. OLG, still coming out without any music. Oh, there it is. There's that music. If he wasn't Irish enough, he's got the green on. It's all there. Both these men, like I said, both these men kind of have a doughy, a doughy physique. They're both incredibly strong men, but they've not got that chiseled, you know, douchey look. So that's good for them. So it's the battle of the dough. Both these men look, I mean, you can tell they're about the same body build, body type. And they both are talented wrestlers. Uh, both are former champions. Well, she's held the hardcore championship. Draven, I believe, has also held the hardcore championship, but but is also was our first Let's Cause Wrestling League champion. So um, that 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 will always belong to him as being the first main title uh, champion, as he won our inaugural tournament many months ago. And Jesus Christ, just puts all that doughy weight down onto OLG before kicking OLG in the head. Though Draven has, um, he did get a win last week over Overlord. He's he's had a hard run of it lately. Ever since losing that title, his, his, his win-loss record has been meh at best. He had a, uh, a small stint as a grungy looking cult member that follow, followed around Brute Force for a while, but was able to get out of Brute Force's grasp. And now has his jorts back. OLG on the other hand, since I, guess, since I guess I'm doing the history of these fucking people since this is our last Friday, OLG on the other hand, initially started, started here, um, well not initially, but pretty soon after he got here, tagged with KTD in foreign glory. But uh, that team was unable to get any traction. Awelji showed not to be that great of a tag team partner. KTD uh, beat the shit out of him in a match, and that was it. For Foreign Glory, and Awelji's kind of just hung around, had some matches, won the hardcore title, and held on to it for a while. Um, but, you know, has been there, has won some matches, lost some matches, and now... He's got one hell of a competitor here against uh, to go against, which is uh, Draven. And he's doing a very good job right now, um, as you can all see. He's going after the legs, stomping that into the mat, um, and holding pretty good control over Draven. Uh-oh, he's already going to go for that Irish drop. And he nails it right in the center of the ring. This could be it for Draven if he can't kick out of this. The leg is hooked. There's one. There's two. And two count. As Draven's able to kick out, and Oelji cannot believe it for whatever reason. Draven, though, hits a huge clothesline, taking Oelji down, and then kicks him kind of in the face a little bit. Which is, you know, a little, a little harsh, but it is what it is. And then drives an elbow hard into the chest before lifting up OLG yet again. OLG though, able to get hold of Draven and now goes for that very odd but deadly looking neck breaker. Lifting Draven back up here and pulling him away from the center of the ring. And oh, might be going for a fall away slam. And he does, nearly trying to throw Draven out of the ring. OLG lifting Draven back up and Draven able to reverse into a shoulder block, taking OLG down. Turns OLG over, and uh-oh, might be going for that big knockout punch, and he hits him, just punches OLG right in the side of the face. Knocking him maybe cold, we'll see. No, only a one count, if even. I, he might have kicked out before the referee even got his hand fully down. So uh, Draven, uh-oh. Draven trying to, uh, trying to do where Benny, oh, there goes the hat. Trying to do what Benny uh, tried before, but I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm not going to let my balls get blue. Um, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Draven. Will, no, Draven, Draven just throws him over there. I don't know why the fuck he did that. Three. We're up to a three count already. These men have to get back in at a count of five. Draven just, again, throwing a Welgy kind of near the table, Four. but not quite near enough. Oh, he kicked in the face yet again. 
Draven throws OLG. Oh, into the table this time, but uh, but it's five, six. six, so we're out. And no, 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 Draven's back out. He's like, no, nah, dude, let's get. Oh, no, no, Draven goes back in. Nope, Draven's back out, and OLG's back in. No, now OLG's back out, and Draven's back in. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Thank you, OLG, for getting in before Draven could do anything. Either way, now, Draven's lifted up by OLG, and oh, there's a rolling Samoan taking Draven down, and I think that's the last we're going to see of the table, and uh-oh. We might be saying the potato peeling edge here. He does get Draven. He's lifted Draven up. It might be done for here. He nails every bit of it. Pulls Draven away from the ropes, which he was kind of already away from the ropes, but whatever. And goes for the pin. Referee gets in position here. One, two, and no Draven able to kick out at two. Well, G. Oh, just headbutts the shit out of Draven. But uh, decides to adjust his tights and Draven able to grab a OLG, throws him in the corner, but takes an elbow to the face. But is able to snap Mare OLG down and goes for a headlock. This has been a pretty entertaining match, although a little slow. But both these men are big men. They're not going to run around and do flippy shit like the cruiserweights. It's a, more, it's a much uh, slower paced match, but both men have like a uh, psychology to it. Almost a chess-like psychology. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, by the way. Um, I'm just trying to trying to fill air. Just trying to fill air. I'm trying to make it so you guys are somewhat entertained by this. Because I never know if you are. Either way, Draven has a Welgy. Takes him over to the ropes here. And is able to throw a Welgy right over the top rope. Punches him down to the mat below. Or pads below, and then follows him and stomps on his knee. Draven lifts OLG back up very slowly. Two. And throws him up the ramp. It's much like we saw earlier tonight with uh, Tomato and... Was it Skyrim Jobs out here or Brute Force? Might have been Brute Force. I can't remember. But this happened before. Draven kicks OLG in the stomach, but OLG grabs Draven and throws him up against the guardrail. Now lifts Five. up... And drops Draven head first on the guard. We're up to a five count, six. up to a six count. Draven needs to get back in the ring. OLG might win this by count out. Seven. We're up to seven. Draven needs to dead sprint to the ring here. Eight. Oh, we got up to an eight, but Draven was able to get out and nails a big fucking clothesline. We've only had one count out in the Let's Cross Wrestling League that I can remember, and it was Freshmaker that got counted out. I can't remember what the match was. Or who he is against, I should say. It might have been for the U.S. title against Tomato. I, I have no fucking idea. Either way, we've only seen one count. We've also only seen one submission in a specifically submissions match, which Canopo won. You're talking about first times for Canopo. Like I said, or, or well, like I said last week. Yeah, uh, Canopo has his chance. Oh, here comes that DDT through the ropes there. Very nice. Uh, Canopo no. has his chance to become the first person in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League to hold two titles at once. Three. Buddy has to get through Freshmaker. Um, <laughs> Draven missing that tackle there. Lifts up a Welgy. Will they do something with the table? Oh. Probably no. A Welgy went face first on the table after getting punched in the head. Um, so they did that. We're up to a five count now. Draven deciding to do six. a submission hold on the outside. We're up to six. He needs to be careful here to not get seven. counted out. We're up to seven. Draven gets back into the ring. Referee. Oh, Draven doesn't want to win this on count out and decides to get right back out. Lifts Whoa. OLG up. No, OLG able to reverse kicking or elbowing Draven and Two. throws him in hard into those steel steps. The hat, of course, has been stepped on Three. quite a lot, which is no good. Draven and OLG have actually Four. shown to have. Oh, Jesus, right back into the stairs. Have shown to have. Uh, Five. One hell of a match here tonight. The fight's fall, uh, falled. Has Six. Um, sprawled out onto the floor outside the ring. It's been inside Seven. the ring. We've almost seen someone go through the table, but not quite. It's 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 been a pretty crazy one. Well, G kicks Draven in the back of the knee here. Oh, was able to turn him around. Might be going for another uh, edge here, and he, got, he has Draven up. Oh, and he hit, throws Draven head for, the back of his head caught that turnbuckle. That's very fucking dangerous. Draven could be out. We'll see. OLG goes for the pin. There's one. There's two. No. 
Draven able to kick out at two. Oh, well, she's a little frust frustrated and bewildered. But throws another punch to the back of the head and uh, does a little power up there, I guess. And sure enough, hits a uh, clothesline, hits a second clothesline, almost like an elbow clothesline. Picks Draven up, slams him down, and shows everyone his nipples. OLG lifts Draven right back up here. Draven is in dire straits. And up and down onto the knee. There's another one of, I don't know if that was, I think that was another one of OLG's signatures. We just don't see it very often. One, Referee's two. counting it. Almost gets it there. But Draven able to kick out again. OLG still bewildered. Draven needs to pull out something here if he wants to win this or uh, stay in this. And oh, he's able to grab OLG, ducking under some sort of punch and slams OLG down. Draven, though, looks like he's a little concussed and bewildered at. Uh, I keep saying bewildered. He doesn't look very bewildered. He just looks fucking concussed. He's breathing heavy, staring, staring at uh, OLG. Uh. Wow, I think he's very concussed because he just stared at Welgy until Welgy picked him up and threw him with a fall away slam. What the fuck was that about? And now, uh-oh, going for a big spin here in the middle of the ring. He's smirking everybody, and he's spinning Draven. Whoa, if Draven was concussed, this certainly isn't going to help him. I'm getting fucking dizzy watching this, and I'm, I don't know why. I'm just a retard, I guess. Either way, OLG rolls up Draven. Draven One, might be out of it. One, two. two. No, Draven still finds the faculties to kick out. I, I think, like I said, I think he's got a concussion or something. The way he's acting, how groggy he is, standing still and everything. Um, and OLG still trying to stay on that head. As he should. Well, I mean, if he was a good person, he wouldn't, right? We'd probably call this match up for medical reasons, but we're terrible bastards here at the Let's Cross the Wrestling League, and these men must keep fighting. Draven, um, unable to really get anything going there, is thrown into the uh, into the corner. OLG has him up. I'm not sure what he's going to go for. Looks like he might go for a big, big-ass super back body drop, and he is. He's on the top. Oh, Jesus Christ, he just dropped Draven right on his head. Oh, if he didn't have a concussion before, he certainly has one now. But uh, I thought he was going to go for a pin, but no. Uh, it looks like he might be going for... Oh, might have been going for that uh, Irish drop, but Draven able to reverse out of it. Draven now climbing up to the top. This will be the first time we've seen Draven go to the very top. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. What kind of... I don't know what kind of splash that was, but it worked. That was a lazy man splash. One, two, three. That's it. What the fuck? Where did that come from? Draven was done. He was down and out. And and that big fucking big southern splash off the top rope wins it. Here was that. It was uh, the first, I think the only Irish drop we saw. This match, of course I didn't finish it as Draven was able to win this. Here was uh, one of two potato peeling edges. Very stupid name for a move. You might want to change that either way. Draven was able to kick out of this one, too. Um, I'm still astonished to see Draven fly. We've never seen Draven jump off the top rope, let alone attempt a moonsault. <laughs> and I say attempt. Oh, jeez, I forgot about that fucking headbutt. Um, almost just went out of disrespect, which Draven didn't take very well. Okay, that was interesting. And here, here it was. Here's Draven reverse the potato peeling or the Irish drop. Goes up to the top rope again. The referees even say, "What the fuck are you doing?" And watch this. <laughs> uh, it it worked. I mean, it worked. Fucking nailed the Welgy. Welgy's down. He was out. That's one of Draven's finishers apparently, and he wins one somehow over a Welgy. And now it is time. For the six-man ladder match, they will all be fighting for a briefcase. What is in that briefcase? I have no fucking idea. It could just be an extra little bit of pay for tonight's event. It could be a guaranteed title shot. I have no idea, and no one will know except for the wrestler that's able to obtain it. 
and we may very well not find out until next season of Let's Cross Wrestling League in 2017. Be that as it may, that mystery, that enticement, that's what all these men are looking for in their lives. And that's why they're all willing to beat the ever-living piss out of each other with some ladders. So possibly some chairs. Possibly some sledgehammers. I, I, they, they, they might go fucking ape shit with all those weapons. I have no idea. Either way, they're willing to do so for a brief kiss. It could have nothing in it. We, we could have told them, hey, ass. Oh, by the way, Anonymous Strike Back came in the ring. Hey, asshole. Oh, here's the sack, man. And I'll tell you, his name ain't Chris Kringle. No, no, no. Uh, he is one half of the Iron Dogs. He is Overlord Dark Wolf. And may we find out what's in that sack? Probably not. Just like we might never find out what's in that briefcase. The sack, though, doesn't look like it's empty. Briefcase could be. And, and as always, Overlord and Exclamation always seem to come out to their singles music. Instead of their Iron Dog music. Which is fair, you know. That's what they had before. And they haven't tagged uh, in a couple weeks now. They they might be a little rusty and they'll be taking on the 1% next week. So there is always that. And now, he is. Oh, fuck the music. God damn it. Anyway, he's Steve Rutabi. He's former hardcore champion. He had a shot. If he would have been able to beat Cat a couple weeks ago, he would have his shot next week at the U.S. title. But alas, it does not work. Rutabi um, is part of the... He, even if he doesn't win this match, he is part of the hardcore title match in Hell in a Cell next week. Um, anonymous jerk bag, by the way was part of that uh, tag team match, as explained earlier. Fucking music. We know that Butler Joe's no longer the sound guy, but whoever whoever replaced him sure as hell does, is not doing a very good job. <laughs> uh, and as you can see uh, by the floating <laughs> fucking thing on the stage... <laughs> Oh, fuck, there he is. There's nil. Normally he has music here, um, <laughs> but it is what it is. He's not got Draz out here with him tonight because, well, that's just not what kind of match this is. Um, Neil will be in that hardcore match as well next week. Um, so he, if, if he's smart, he'll try to do as much damage to Butabi tonight as he can um, in order to keep this a little bit less of a pain in the ass next week. Um, it's really weird doing commentary over no sound whatsoever. Uh, usually the sound helps. It helps break up the silence when I have nothing to say, like right now. In fact, I have so little to say right now about Nil's entrance that, um, well, I'm talking about not having anything to say, which is always the worst fucking thing. Oh, everything fucking did. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, there's Nils' music, and Nils out here. Nils has shown to be a, a very capable wrestler, even if he drags himself down with uh, Draz. He, uh, in fact, there's Draz signs even still in the crowd, which I don't know why they wouldn't be in the crowd. They, these people brought their signs in. It's not like they're going to change their signs throughout the event, depending on who's in the wrestling match. That would be silly. <laughs> that'd be that'd be ridiculous. Uh, who's that? Who's coming up next? No, Sex G. Tank G's coming out next. That's great. And he's going to sprint to the fucking ring. And, oh, fuck the music again. God damn it. I mean, I guess it fits Taxi Genie's entrance of being fucking off the wall crazy, shaking the ropes, the pyro going off, 
doing some weird, I am constipated walk, going to the other rope, shaking those as he's got Pyro going off behind him. Finally, we have a good camera angle of that. Usually the camera's on the wrong fucking, it's on the wrong fucking camera. Either way, fuck. The doughiest, well, not the doughiest, that would be tomato. Second doughiest. Oh, and fuck, here comes Captain ZM. Captain has had a couple wins here. They've both been all over Draz, and he will have to fight Draz next week. One on one, uh, yet again in a uh, extreme rules match. He obviously doesn't want to be the first one to lose to Draz. But I think this is Draz's best chance is a match against Captain, which is possibly why we've seen three fucking matches with these two idiots. But Draz still can't seem to get anything done, even over the likes of Captain ZM. And Captain could surprise us all tonight if he's able to get that briefcase. I mean, it's a ladder match. Everyone else could beat the piss out of each other. Captain could hide under the ring for the majority of the match. And, uh, and, and win it by sneaking back in and climbing up and grabbing that, that, uh, briefcase. I mean, he, if he, if he, if he can run away fast enough and go hide, I don't think anyone will give a shit. So that, that could be a tactic. Who knows? Either way, he's showing everyone it's going to be okay. He looks up at the top, or he looked up at the fucking thing. And everyone's about ready to go. Here we go. I don't even know how I'm gonna call this. It's gonna be so much. Hern can run straight to Captain, so that must not have been his plan. And oh Jesus Christ, Overlord just dropped right on his asshole. And uh, now, now Butabi and Neil are fighting the outside. Of course, this is there are no rules. Where did the ladders go? Weren't there ladders at the beginning of this when Anonymous Jerkbag came out? Weren't they up in, uh, on the outside of the ring? Did someone shove them back under the ring or something? That's fucking stupid. Why would someone do that? Well, either way, the ladders are gone. So, uh, well, Butabi, though, is going to remedy that. No, he's going to grab a, a steel chair, which is perfectly legal. As I was going to say, oh, God, he can't fucking figure out how to get in the ring. As I was going to say, it's perfectly legal. And now he's back out of the ring. For And now he's back in the ring to use a steel chair. And, oh, fuck, he just decked Captain, of all people, to go after the steel chair. And he does it a couple of times. And, oh, fuck, Taxi just dropped Anonymous onto that chair. Like I said, this is going to be one wild, crazy... Wet match, wet with blood possibly, as all these men, like I said, everything is legal in this match. I don't, I don't know if I talked about Taxi for next week, um, but of course he is part of that elimination tag match. Anyway, fuck. I, I, I just gotta pick a couple of guys to talk about it. That steel chair's still in the middle of the ring. Taxi, uh-oh. He's got Anonymous up and just, oh, tried to drop him on that chair, but Anonymous able to get out of it. Meanwhile, Neil slammed down by Overlord. And uh, Butabi lifting up Captain Butabi having to do the least amount of work. Oh, going for those triple German suplexes. I don't know why he's singled out Captain. But he certainly fucking has. And Captain just folded up like a fucking... Uh, one of those goddamn things. What are those called? The accordions. Um, but now he's actually on top of it. Taxi hits the taxi driver here on Anonymous. Or just did. I called that before it happened, but I do that sometimes. Um, it really sucks when I edit these and have to do, uh, if I have to sync up my audio and I, and I realize that I'm calling moves before they happen and I'm like, hey, did my audio desync? And I'm like, no, I'm just a fucking retard. Anyway, Anonymous now hitting the rolling thunder on Taxi Genie. There's just signature and finisher moves going fucking everywhere. But again, there are no pinfalls. There are no submissions. You have to retrieve the briefcase to win. So all men, all the men, oh fuck. Overlord just got decked the fuck out by a captain there on the outside. Um, as I was saying, all, all these men have to do is they've all, of course, paired up, is beat the shit out of each other. And uh oh. Okay, I thought uh, it looked like Anonymous was going to DET taxi on that chair, but he didn't. Um, so there you go. Nil. Oh, misses the punch and does jump out. And, oh, clips Butabi on the way down, but hurts himself almost just as much. Meanwhile, Captain. Putting the pain down on uh, on Overlord on the outside, actually. How embarrassing for Overlord. Taxi reverses out of whatever the hell was going to go on there, but Anonymous able to reverse out himself. And now doing that backflip bottom, taking down Taxi Genie. We haven't seen any ladders so far in this match. 
um, despite that's what this match is about. But all the men, all every man has to do a lot of damage to each other in order to really go for that ladder. You know, even if they f beat the shit out of one of the guys, and uh oh, Taxi might get Taxi might get Spider suplexed onto that fucking chair. Holy shit, is he gonna reach it? I don't know. No, thankfully his head inches away from that chair. And now Anonymous hitting the frog splash on Taxi. But I was saying, even if the and, uh, captain just contemplating life and decide, oh, no, he decided, he did go back up there. Okay. Um, like I said, even if you beat the shit out of one person, you've got five others in that ring or four others in that ring, I should say, because you are a person. Um, and you don't want to beat the shit out of yourself, necessarily. Um, you got a whole lot of other fucking people in that ring to, to take out, too, before you can climb up and grab that, but no one's even attempted so far. And, and Captain's still just kind of fucking standing there. That's, I don't know what the fuck Captain's doing. Either way, oh, Taxi might be setting up a spear here. Oh, it might be on that chair. No, oh, and he does. He nails Anonymous onto that chair with that spear. And fucking captain, what is he doing? He keeps knocking down Overlord and just standing in the corner like some... I don't know what he's doing. Either way, uh, Butabi throws Nil into the side of the ring. Looks like he's gonna do it again. Oh, actually into the post. Going after Nil's most favorite f feature. Meanwhile, a big power bomb. Oh, God, I get to that post again. A big power bomb onto Captain, and Anonymous gets thrown into the, uh, into the stairs. Overlord punches Captain to the outside. I'm waiting for the first time that we'll see a ladder get, uh, uh, obtained by somebody, but who knows when that'll happen. Everyone seems pretty content on just beating the shit out of each other. Neil thrown into the ring again, and Anonymous keeps getting thrown into the, uh, stairs by Taxi. And we got all the men back in the ring again. Uh, Captain, though, getting thrown back. And now everyone's going back out of the ring again. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Oh, no, Anonymous, or Overlord grabbing Captain and just hammering on Captain there. Jesus Christ. He's trying to stop Captain's heart or something. Fuck, how many? And Captain just flops down to the outside. It's actually, it's a German suplex on Anonymous, though. And Nail is still being thrown into the ring, uh, up against the ring by Matabi. The more things change, the more they stay the same, I guess, as this is basically what matabi has been doing to Nail for the last five minutes. <laughs> but who the fuck even knows? God damn. Oh, fuck. What is going on here? Uh, is Butabi just going to keep doing this to Nail on the outside? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, let's let them just keep doing that for a while. Tax Genie grabs Anonymous. Of course, these men couldn't be further apart from each other, so our camera's all zoomed out. Dumbass looking. Um, Anonymous flopping down the outside. Why the fuck has nobody gone for a ladder yet? I have no idea. Captain throws uh, Overlord back into the ring and throws an elbow into his face. Captain now following him into the ring. Uh, Taxi Genie going after Anonymous. Lifting him up here. And looks like going to throw him into the steps again. <laughs> What are these retards doing? Everyone's just doing the same fucking moves. And, oh, a spinning clothesline takes out Overlord. Captain. Showing he's got some, some ability to do something. Taxi now getting back into the ring. Overlord throws Captain over the top rope yet again. And punches him to the outside. Meanwhile, now Taxi's grabbed Anonymous again and throws him over the top rope to the outside. Holy shit. Uh, oh, Neil hits the pretty pullback on Butabi, but lifts Butabi right back up here. And throws him over to the outside. Oh, the spin kick on the captain by Overlord. Oh, this match could last forever if nobody goes for a ladder. Nobody seems to be. Usually somebody goes after a ladder by now, so I'm getting worried that all these all these competitors are just going to keep beating the shit out of each other the entire match. Especially since I said it was odd that someone had removed the ladders from the side of the ring. Um, so either somebody fucked up and the ladders are just missing... Or everyone just wants to beat the shit out of each other. This is the final Friday. You know, all these men are gonna be in, are gonna be in the, the final pay-per-view though, for the season. I keep saying the final. It's just for the season. We're gonna have another season 2017. Don't worry if you really care about this. Uh. 
fuck. I, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Like I said, there's no there's no ladders. No one's gone for a ladder. We only had one person go for a uh, chair earlier. So I'll have my hopes here, but I think we're just gonna see everyone beat the ever-living shit out of each other for the next fucking hour before anyone decides that they want to uh, get that brief. Maybe, like I said, maybe they don't give a fuck about what's in that stupid briefcase. Maybe they all think nothing's in the briefcase and they just want to take this opportunity to beat the shit out of each other. I don't know. Why would you be a, a professional wrestler if you didn't want to beat the shit out of people? Especially in Let's Cross the Wrestling League where we have no healthcare or anything like that or any bonus packages. It, it, it's just, it's just the way it is. These guys are fucking crazy as shit and, uh, and they're showing it right now. Overlord has his hands on Captain. Throws Captain over the top rope. And now, oh, he's gonna beat on his chest a little bit, so we're gonna move on. Nail throws Butabi over the top rope. And, oh, goes for a punch, but Butabi able to reverse that. Jumps over and just nails him with a somersault. Now lifting up Nail here. And, well, throws him over the top rope. <laughs> Oh man, that chair has not seen any action really since the beginning of the match when Butabi went and grabbed it. Um, Butabi lifts up Nil, and oh for fuck's sake, throws him against the ring. ring. What is going on in this match? Anonymous kicks on uh, Taxi here on the outside, lifts Taxi up, but Taxi able to reverse into an arm drag. Another spin kick by Overlord on Captain. But he, could, he just follows up right away, going after Captain. And throws Captain in the corner. Overlord grabs Captain. Oh, Jesus Christ, someone got busted open. I think it's Taxi Genie. I was waiting for blood to spill. And sure enough, it did. Oh, and then, and then Captain just got punched to the outside. Meanwhile, a big fucking T-Bone Suplex kind of levels both Butabi and Nil. Captain showing some fight against Overlord. We've, we've, we've mostly had the same pairing this match um, with with slight dis discrepancies, but but we had a very, a very similar pairing at least for the last few minutes or so. Uh, taxi bleeding and just staring at, uh, at Anonymous, possibly pissed that, that Anonymous busted him open, but doesn't do much about it as Anonymous slams him down. Butabi thrown into the ring here and elbowed by Nil. Nil grabs Taxi Genie, thro oh, throws him into an invisible force field, it looks like, and then throws him in. Uh, okay, just throws him down. That's great. Anonymous grabs Butabi, throws Butabi over the top rope. And punches him to the outside. <laughs> Taxi, thrown to the ring, eats an elbow to the face. Uh, I don't know what Anonymous is gonna go for there. It looked like he might have thought about looking under the ring for a ladder, but no, it's, it's just going after Butabi instead. Uh, <laughs> Overlord thrown into the ring. Now we've got four of the sick competitors back into the ring. I can only guess it's gonna be temporary as a lot of these men like to fight on the outside and sure enough, Taxi throws Nil over to the outside. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here. I don't think anyone's gonna go for a ladder. I'm, I, I don't think anyone's gonna go for a ladder. I think the ladders were removed at the beginning of the match for some silly reason. And and I, I don't know if they're under the ring and no and nobody knows that and they're not going going for them. I <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. I think they're just all gonna beat the fuck out of each other. Um until they're all dead. I, I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what the fucking deal is here But nobody has gone for a ladder and in ladder matches usually we see someone go for a ladder Immediately and in these matches we saw like I said we saw the ladder when anonymous jerkbag came out to the ring We saw the ladders on the outside of the ring And now they're gone And that makes me very suspicious
All right. Um, well, we, 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 we stopped the match. We, we cleaned up Taxi a bit. We said, guys, someone played a prank and the ladders were taken away. I don't know who did it, when they did it. No one saw it. But someone stole the fucking ladders before the man. Now we've got, now, now Butami goes for a ladder that isn't even set up. What the fuck, Butami? They were, they're set up now. Why didn't you grab that fucking ladder? La okay, anyway, whatever, whatever. We put the, we grabbed the ladders from underneath the ring. We've got them, we've got them back. Butami's killing people with them. Like I said, we cleaned up Taxi. He, 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 he was bleeding pretty good, so we, we gave him a, a couple of quick stitches. He, he decided he wanted to be stay in this match. And we said, hey, you're bleeding pretty bad. He said, no, fuck. He said it's some Indian thing. I don't know. He doesn't speak English, so we have no fucking idea what he really said. Um, but but either way, he he's clearly still fighting, so I guess he wanted to. Uh, and now, now everybody's got a fucking ladder. Now everybody's got a fucking ladder. We have no idea, like I said, who took the ladders. It, oh, for fuck's sake. Anonymous er, and, and Nil. <laughs> Take the shit out of Anonymous with that ladder. Um, we've got stairs in the ring. We have no idea who took those ladders. It's going to be as much of a mystery as what's in Overlord's sack and what's in that briefcase. Maybe we'll get down to the bottom of it someday. But either way, we're back on track. At least there's ladders now that we found. They were just shoved under the ring. It could have just been a crew, a crewman, a crewman. Oh, ooh, that ladder's just hanging over the ropes. That's precarious. Oh, fuck it. The cap just ate a spinning kick. Oh, but at least, at least there's ladders now. I, I'm happy. I'm happy about it. There's, everyone, everyone's got a ladder. We, we have more than enough ladders now. We had no ladders before. Now we have three. Like I said, it, it infuriates me that Butabi, last time uh, before we reset the match here, or at least we told everyone, hey, you're supposed, there's supposed to be ladder. I don't know. No one fucking seemed to know that it was even a ladder match. Everyone was just content. Like, dude, we've got to beat everyone. Is, is it like a six-man last stand, man standing match? Like, I don't know what everyone was thinking, but we explained it to them. We said, guys, stop. We, we rang the bell. We said, stop, 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 stop. They, they were very confused. We had someone go look underneath the, the ring, and sure enough, there were ladders there. We have no idea who put them back under. Like I said, it could have just been a terrible crew member, which I could see. We've now got both stairs in the ring. And, oh, fuck, Taxi just... Broke the spine and kneecap of Overlord with those. But anyway, we have no fucking idea. Oh, now Butabi's dismantling the, the table. We have no fucking idea who who did it. We'll try to get to the bottom of it. Either way, we're now going properly here. All these men are beating the fucking piss out of each other. And now there's what there's there's tons of shit in the ring. Uh, the, the, the table's been dismantled by Butabi. Butabi looks like he's gonna do a running move of some sort. He jumps and he nails Anonymous and stays on his feet. This is much more like it. Holy shit! Oh, Lord lifts up Taxi. Taxi gets thrown into the corner here and lifted up to the top rope. Looks like, I'm not sure what Overlord's gonna go for. Oh, looks like a DDT for the top rope. Okay, I thought he was gonna go for something crazier, but he still nails something really hard. On Taxi, those stairs almost out of the ring again. Taxi eats a knee here, but is able to get out of it. Meanwhile, Anonymous and Butabi fighting on the outside. Butabi's thrown into the, uh, in the ring. Neil drops, oh, uh, uh, fuck, Captain on his head. Now all six men are in the ring. Looks like Neil might be going for his, uh, Oh, went for a big leg drop, but gets nothing. Miraculously, it didn't seem to be very hurt. And Butabi, uh, looks like he's interested in trying to hit somebody with that ladder. And he nails Nil right in the back of the head with it. And takes out Overlord as well. And is going right after Overlord's legs here. And, oh, Jesus Christ. Captain just ate a, a, a drop kick to the face from the outside. Butabi lifts up Overlord here. And throws him clean over the top rope and to the outside. Meanwhile, looks like Anonymous grabs the ladder. And Taxi hits his taxi driver on Nil. 
Anonymous, not sure what to do with that ladder. Oh, decides to set it up. We might see the first attempt to go for that briefcase. No, never mind. He throws the <laughs> ladder out of the ring. He decides, nah, I still don't want, want what's in it. <laughs> he just throws it out of the ring. Fuck me. All right, Anonymous, though, cleaning house, taking everybody out. But Overlord taking out Anonymous. Um, I don't throw that over the ring. Oh, takes out Butami. Overlord could fucking just climb the ladder. Everyone's out in the ring, but is, uh, what is he doing? Are you, what is he, what's he doing, Overlord? Just set the fucking ladder up. Oh, for fuck's sake. Overlord goes, oh, hits, I think he hit Butabi right in the dick with that ladder. That's not good. Oh, fuck, I heard Karana onto the ladder, courtesy of Anonymous onto Nil. And now I had to rush the leg sweep, oh, almost onto that ladder. Nil thrown over the top rope, out and hits that ladder on the outside. Meanwhile, Butabi, I don't know what he's fucking doing. Jesus Christ, he jumps from the, the fucking top rope to the outside to take out Captain. Meanwhile, Overlord's lifted up by Anonymous. This match got a lot more exciting when ladders are involved and not everyone's being dumb as shit. The, the hat has gone missing. There's a mystery there as well. I have no idea where the hat has gone. Uh, Taxi sets up the ladder nowhere near where he needs to and gets out of the ring. Uh. Meanwhile, uh, looks like uh, Anonymous might be going for that spider suplex. The, uh, the ladder has been tipped over. And there it was. And we might see a five-star frog splash to, uh, to, to top it off here. Uh, Captain. Looks like he's thumbed uh, Butabi in the eye, and I believe we did see a five-star frog splash. Sorry, I got too distracted with fucking what Captain was doing, which is stupid as hell. Uh, Anonymous hits a Northern Light suplex there. Um, oh god, everyone's pacing. Butabi grabs the ladder and sets it up. He might be actually trying to go at... No. No, he set it up and... Uh, uh, what's he doing? He's, he's got out of the ring. Okay. Well, that's stupid. And now... <laughs> Nail is taking the ladder back down, but he set it back up again for fuck, fuck, all, fuck who knows why. Who fucking knows what these these fucking retards are doing? I have no idea. Either way, either way, it's still better than when we were a while ago. Overlords, oh, hey, Captain's here! Here he goes! Captain's trying to steal it! Captain might get this! No one's in the fucking ring! Nil! Uh oh! Uh, taxi! Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, Captain doesn't get it. Oh, between Nil and, and Taxi, they were able to stop Captain. And uh oh, Taxi though does not team up with Nil very long as he stops him and, and arm drags him. Oh, and oh, and into that ladder almost. Uh, oh fuck, are we, what are we seeing here? Oh, Batavi's throwing in another ladder. Nil's thrown out to the outside. Captain lays out Overlord, and then Butabi with the ladder. And uh, somehow hits uh, Anonymous with it. I have no. Oh, there goes that letter. <laughs> what is going on? This is the most fucked match ever. And there goes. <laughs> there's the letter. It's out. What is that again? <laughs> hey, there's fucking running bulldog. Oh, for fuck's sake. And now it looks like Overlord going for those punches. And and uh, and Nils brought the stairs instead of a ladder into the ring. Uh, Nil has picked up and throws the stairs down and eats the shittiest super kick I've ever seen from uh, Taxi Genie. Taxi lifting up Nil here very slowly. Uh, and, and, and just gets out of the ring. Okay. Um, we, oh, okay. Nil, just grab the ladder. No one's in the ring. Just grab the fucking ladder, you dumbass. Okay. Nil's got the ladder. Uh, and now Butabi's in. Um, and, and Butabi says no. <laughs> It and sets the ladder back up, but Captain rolls in and oh god, the ladder just falls on Nil! Very gingerly, but it happened. Now Taxi has the ladder and is setting the ladder up. Um, oh fuck! Overlord just got hit by something fierce. And uh oh. Taxi! The, the crowd say, oh Taxi did it! Taxi was able to do it, Nil! It's, it's reaching for the. the and, uh, and everyone's still fighting! Taxi is won and everyone's still fighting! Holy shit, finally! What a clusterfuck! I honestly don't even care now what's in that what's in that uh, in that briefcase. Only Taxi will know unless we find out later. Oh my God, it's mercifully over. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, <laughs> I'm still I'm still a bit uh, <laughs> a bit fucked myself from that last match. 
This one's exclamation versus KT. Exclamation, of course, part of the Iron Dogs will be facing with his partner Overlord, who was in the previous match. Will be facing the 1% in a tag match next week. Huh. KTD part of the six man tag, the elimination tag. Or six person, I guess, because KTD is not a man. But fuck me, I still gotta get over the match we just had. What a clusterfuck that was. I still I think it was entertaining. <laughs> After we found the ladders. But uh, be that as it may. KTD and Exclamation have uh, have to do. I, I don't know that they're gonna one up that match that we just saw. But hey, the music's not fucked. We missed the pyro. We missed KTD's pyro. Oh, there it is. There's the music's fucked. Okay, I was wondering. I was one. I was. I was wondering what was going on. And that, that's what's going on. God damn it. Well, you know. It is what it is. At least we still have the boom physics, I suppose. Can't fuck that up. No, sir. <laughs> Not like you fucked the music up. KTD still has Pyro again, as she is not a champion anymore. Hopefully, we figure out why that, why, why, uh, why we're not triggering that Pyro uh, next season. Whenever someone's a champion, hopefully that that gets sorted out. Who knows if it will? The crowd completely silent. Uh, all right, let's get it fucking going. KTD and exclamation actually tie it up. First time we've seen any chain wrestling tonight that I can remember. Um, KTD actually showing some nice skill and expertise here. Sweeps down exclamation. Exclamation's like, ow, that hurt my arm, dude. And then KTD said, fuck you, I'm not a dude. And slaps him across the face. KTD pulls exclamation away from the ropes here. Lifts him up and hits a uh, kind of a float over snapmare. And then uh, lifts him up again. So, uh, exclamation reverses, throws KTD hard against the ropes, and hits a back body suplex on a KTD, dropping her on the head, on her, on the head, on her head, and then just kicks her in the back of the ribs. Back of the ribs? What am I, f in the back? Now there's no ribs. What? What? Exclamation, I'm still, like I said, I'm still a little fucked from last match. That's, I'm throwing a dirty, deliberate knee into the head of KTD. Now, this does not change anything. If Exclamation wins, it doesn't change anything. KGD still has her title shot, but she won't get it until next season um, for the U.S. title. She'll either get to face Cad or Baza, whoever comes out ahead uh, in that match next week. Um, but that's 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 far from now. KGD has Exclamation to worry about tonight and then has a, a six-man tag to worry about next week. So, um, you know, that's what it is. She hits a drop to a hold on Exclamation. Uh, turns exclamation over and looks like targeting the arm Not sure why exclamation doesn't have really a lot of uh, offensive moves with his arms if anything He she should target the legs because he has that curb stomp But uh, what I'm not a wrestler. What do I know? Exclamation uh, Punches KTD kind of in the back the back of the head area of sorts But KTD reverses into a jawbreaker so far this man. Oh, and now a famous are out of nowhere so far This match has been pretty even uh back and forth both wrestlers um unable to really get a huge uh, a good hold on this match is uh reversals have been plenty though exclamation is currently in charge at the moment but misses that punch hits the second one dazing kcd kicks and then hits a ddt taking kcd out exclamation decides to go for the first pin of the match one two we get almost a three, we get two and three quarters almost. KTD, surprisingly, almost pinned already. Now exclamation going up to the middle rope here and drops in the knee and elbow into the back and, uh, and the head of KTD. Now exclamation, oh, hitting the kick. Might be going for the scissors kick here. Nails it. KTD is in trouble now. Goes for another pin here. One. Two, no, KCD kicks out a little bit quicker that time, actually. And now exclamation, throwing in another knee to the back of KTD. KTD has been um, surprisingly absent in this match uh, for the last couple minutes here. Exclamation has shown full control. 
Exclamation lifts up KTD and throws her right back into the ring. Um, making you question why did he even throw her out of the ring to begin with? But, you know, it does some damage, I suppose. So maybe that's why. I don't fucking know. Either way, uh, exclamation. Mounting KTD here and throwing in some hard punches right to the face. KTD rocked, but not out yet. And uh, gets punched again in the face. Exclamation. Th throws KTD over the top rope again. Misses the first punch, but hits the second one. And now KTD spills to the outside. Exclamation follows after her. And so help me if he throws her right back into the ring. And he does. Fuck! Exclamation. What are you doing? KTD. A bit dazed and confused, I suppose. I, I, I don't know. She hasn't done shit. Uh, for the last few minutes exclamation has Definitely been completely in control lifts KTD up. Uh oh, we haven't seen this actually for a few or for a couple weeks Exclamation gonna go for that suplex from the top rope to the outside. Oh shit Fuck Whoa. Usually the crowd chants something about something being awesome when that happens, but this time they're not as impressed Ooh. It's Philadelphia. These people are retards um, I've used that word a lot tonight. Three. I wonder why. Uh, KTD, though, all of a sudden is in control despite being Four. suplexed to the outside. Exclamation might have done more damage to himself than he did to KTD. KTD does not fear suplexes no matter how high they are. KTD now, oh God, going after that Russian entanglement uh, neck breaker. And then goes for the pin. One, uh, a two, uh, and not enough as the exclamation was able to kick out. KCD needs to immediately capitalize and not fuck around here as she's been, uh, you know, a, a punching bag most of this match. And now just right back to it. Exclamation, exclamation takes her down. Now has her in a headlock. KCD, middle of the ropes, or middle of the ropes, middle of the rings, nowhere near the ropes right now. Could go to sleep here. Either from the stench of Exclamation's armpits or from this sleeper hold. No, it does not go out. And Exclamation, oh god, she gets up really quick, but not quick enough as Exclamation was able to grab her and power bombs the ever living shit out of her. Exclamation now lifting KTD right back up. Kicks her. Might be going for another scissors kick here. And he nails it. KTD looks like she might be out. Exclamation, if he would make a quick pin here instead of just staring at her, maybe he could win this, but he might have wasted too much time. We got one, two, no, KCD kicks out at two. Exclamation, like I said, spent, waste, just wasted too much time, I believe, staring at KTD. And uh oh, looks like might be setting KTD up for the uh, curb stomp here. This could be it if he hits it. He kicks KCD in the stomach. Goes off the ropes, he's up, and slams her face, I think busted KTD open. One, Could be it. No, KTD's able to kick out. She is bleeding profusely. That curb stop is very dangerous. And uh, he got all of it, KTD also got all of it as her face nails the mat and, and fuck, just, like I said, blood just oozing down her nose and, and such. But exclamation. Oh, no, KTD getting nailed out of it. KTD still showing she's a fighter and is still fighting despite uh, being injured. Goes for a pin after that odd death drop, but uh, exclamation able to kick out. KTD a little bit winded here as she should be. She's gotten the shit kicked out of her for most of this match. Um, and now exclamation's got her again. Might be going for another. Oh, goes for a pile driver here and drops her right on her head. Which, of course, has had a lot of damage to it. Exclamation. Pulls KTD away from the uh, away from the ropes here. And now it looks like... Oh, just throws an elbow straight into her face. KTD doesn't stay down, though, and, is re and reverses with a jawbreaker to Exclamation. Exclamation, though, grabs KTD right away. Lifts her up and powerbombs her again. Jesus Christ. He turns KTD over. KTD bleeding a little bit more, even. Looks like, um, as exclamation goes after the legs here. And, oh, Jesus Christ, that fucking clothesline just obliterates KT with that clothesline and goes for, I would not be surprised if this is it. There's one, two, no, KTD kicks out again. We've seen she can take one hell of a beating. She can take some serious punishment, you know, d despite losing her, uh, 
her title against Baza a couple weeks ago. The you know the only person that ever beat Baza for the title to begin with, after Baza went undefeated as the champion for so long, or at least undefeated in title defenses, I should say. And oh, here comes that that Russian neckbreaker again. Um, she goes for the pin. Hold on, one, two, no exclamation kicks out at two. Let's say KCD sure as hell fought her heart out in that title defense but uh Baza was able to do just enough damage to keep her down either way KCD going for a jump spinning neck breaker and she hits it now turns exclamation over here she's not gone for any finishers so far this match was was her problem against Baza she decided not to hit any finishers on him for some stupid ass reason um which I think cost her the match um so hopefully she doesn't decide to uh do that again tonight she was able to beat brute force last week um but again she used her fucking finishers now exclamation kicks her in the stomach goes for another curb stomp jesus christ kcd just needs to stay down after that i mean fuck one there's two and three i was gonna say i don't think she could take much more damage exclamation wins it with that second curb stomp, it seemed to be out of nowhere. KCD was already bleeding, possibly concussed. Exclamation went after that head over and over again. This uh, was one of the scissor kicks here, taking KCD down. This did not obviously finish the match off. His exclamation only got a two count. Um, again, though, like I said, KG did never went for a finisher. She got these. I, I don't think that neck and uh, neck and that Russian neck breaker there is um, is a finisher of hers. I think that's just a signature move from her. So you know, I, I have no idea. She didn't go for her spin kick, and she didn't go for that elbow drop that she likes. That seems to do a lot of damage. But she, like I said, she hit this thing twice to take out Exclamation. Exclamation, of course, kicks out. Kick, kicks out. Kicked out. Well, oh, the hat's back. Kicked out both times. And I think this is it where Exclamation powered out of this surfboard stretch. Elbowed KT in the stomach. Kicked KT in the stomach again. Went off the ropes. Jumped up and slammed her face right into the mat with that. The second curb stomp. KT was down and out. Exclamation gets a quick pin there. And it's over. Exclamation wins it here tonight. This next match is for the Hardcore Championship. And coming out to the ring wearing half of the Tag Team Championships. Championships? He is Canopal. He will not have Gar in his corner tonight. No, as, as I've said week after week, Hardcore title matches and the sanctity of those matches is that although there are no rules, one of the only rules is that they are not allowed to have uh, have their teammates or anything like that come out. If Canopal is able to win here tonight, he will not only have the, that, that title there, but he'll also have the hardcore title and therefore be the first person to win two titles in the Les Crosby Wrestling League. At the same time, I should say, to hold two titles at the same time. Freshmaker, a two-time hardcore champion, one-time U.S. champion, and looking to be one-time tag team champion. If he's able to beat, if he and uh, Kick Bubblegum are able to beat the team of the Fallen next week in the tag title match, he, if he can hold on to the title tonight, will be the first person to hold two titles. So there's a lot of ifs. Number one, Freshmaker can, he has to, you know, finish off Knobel's dreams of being the first competitor here to hold two titles at the same time uh, by winning. Now, this is just a uh, Nola Holds Bard match, so all weapons are legal tonight. And there's the championship that we're fighting for tonight. And like I said... Both, uh, both these men will fight again next week in a tag match for the tag titles. But they have to worry about this match tonight. Here's the thing, though. No matter who wins this match, they're going to have two matches at, uh, at uh, 
final blow uh, because they will have to be in the hardcore title match. So, and, and that hardcore title match. Let me look at the let me look at the uh, the location of that. It looks like the hardcore title match will be our fourth match, while the tag title match will be our third match. So they'll have to defend their hardcore title after already having been in a championship match for the tag team titles. Um, so they definitely won't be 100%, and fuck me, they won't be 100% even getting there if uh, if they keep going at it like this. Canopel just merciless, mercilessly beating the shit out of uh, Freshmaker there, but Freshmaker actually able to get uh, Canopel up and slam him down. Now he's going after the stairs, wants to show Canopel his own medicine here. Show Canopel his own medicine? <laughs> and he does, and oh, looks like... <laughs> What the fuck just happened? Freshmaker took a tumble there. Somehow. Um. That was odd. Uh, either way. Uh, Canopel reversing that. Taking Freshmaker down. But Freshmaker reversing that with a headbutt. Taking Canopel back down. And now throws Canopel. Uh, but goes nowhere. And Canopel able to come around and hit a, a DDT. Almost onto those stairs. Canopel almost hit himself on the stairs even. Um. Of course. The uh. The match must end in the ring, not outside of it. So all the all all the fighting they can do is they they can do as much fighting as they want to out here, but they have to get their opponent back in the ring to make a pin or a submission. Though I don't think we'll see a submission. Oh, nice hook kick by uh, or, or heel kick, or I should say, by Fresh Man. They really like those stairs this match. And, oh fuck! Right across the stomach and crotch twice. Of Knopel. Oh, almost got his third, third time, but Knopel's able to get out of it. Grabs the stair, or is fighting for the stairs. Grabs the stairs away from Freshmaker. And nails Freshmaker with them. And those shares, if, it's shares, if those stairs, they are sharp. They hit you just right. You're, you're going to be busted open and bleeding like a stuck pig. But either way, Knopel in charge of the stairs at the moment, and therefore in charge of the match. Going after uh, Freshmaker now. Freshmaker, though, reversing. Grabs and rips at the arm of Knopel and hits a running drop kick, nailing Knopel, knocking him down. Most of this match is taking place outside of the ring. Both these men just wanted to do some damage. I mean, th there's, there's, the thing about this hardcore match is, I mean, normally hardcore matches are bad enough because you're, you're trying to deal damage with weapons and, and whatever else. But both these men know that it benefits them to hurt their other opponent as much as possible because they'll have um Knopel kind of shrugging that off they'll have a tag team match against them in a week so they definitely want to want to want to actually hurt each other here oh Freshmaker doing a nice little backflip um so, so there's a little bit more on the line than just and, and of course your opponent it has the same feelings and knows that you do too um there's a little bit more on the line than your typical Hardcore match. Freshmaker hitting a nice series of uh, moves there. Some drop kicks and a neck breaker. Freshmaker uh, lifts up Knopel and throws Knopel into the corner. Might be going for that DDT. Sure enough, he grabs him. He's going to run off the ropes here. Jumps up and hits the DDT. I thought for a second it would have been on the stairs, but no, the stairs were nowhere close. And now Freshmaker going for the pin, trying to finish this off right now. One, two. Oh, Knopel almost beaten there in his dreams of being the first person to hold two championships at the same time. It was almost dashed. Freshmaker, oh, kicks Knopel right in the fucking dick. And now it goes for the whoopsie daisy, but doesn't turn it into a pin. Freshmaker. Now it goes to the top. Might be going for the uh, shooting star press here from the top rope. If he gets it, it could be over. And he nails it and rolls up the leg. This could be it. Referee, what are you doing? Get down. One, two. Oh, it was almost already over. Freshmaker not spending any time. Well, as you say, not spending any time going, oh, how did that happen? But it looks like he's a little too winded to capitalize. Oh, and Knopel just throwing in a headbutt, but Freshmaker hitting in a kick, but gets taken down by an arm drag. Knopel picks up Freshmaker, showing his strength, and throws him down nearly onto the stairs. It's odd. We've only seen the stairs used as a weapon this match, although they could go go and fucking use anything. Uh, to pin after a leg sweep. That's odd. Uh, Freshmaker definitely showing his fatigue here. He's tired. Both men have been are beaten and bruised from just those stairs alone. 
let alone the actual moves they've been doing to each other. Though Freshmaker's the only one to actually hit any kind of signature or finisher move as of yet, and is now going for a headlock, trying to wear down Canopal and try to take a breather himself. Canopal needs to get out of this. He can lose from submission, even though he's the only person who's ever won via submission. But, uh, no, he's able to finally get out of it. Maneuver his way around. Now he has Freshmaker, but kind of rakes the eyes a little bit. But Freshmaker grabbing and hanging a backflip bottom on Canopal out of nowhere. And then goes for another pin. One, two. Almost gets it. We get a two count. And Freshmaker showing his fatigue yet again. Canopal getting to one foot first, but no, both men roughly getting back to the feet at the same time, but Freshmaker able to grab Canopal right away and throws him into the corner. Freshmaker, oh, I thought he was going to go for the DDT, but no, just lifts up Canopal to the top rope. Might be going for a Hern Canrana. Yep, sure enough, just a jump standing Hern Canrana off the top rope, taking down Canopal. Freshmaker, looks like he's taunting Canopal before going for a pin. Can't say that that was wise. Wasting your time before pinning. Um really wasn't the smartest move, but I mean, if it helps you get into the head of your opponent, especially an opponent you're going to have next week for the tag titles, then why the fuck not? Knopel blocking a suplex, reversing with one of his own. And missing, oh, actually, I was going to say missing, he kicked it. Freshmaker, Freshmaker got out of it. And now Freshmaker throws Knopel back to the middle rope here. Turns around. Maybe he's going to go for that DDT again? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. No, he's going to go for, uh, Oh, head scissors instead. Very, very well executed head scissors from the top rope. Goes for a pin again. Trying to finish this off. Trying to keep the hardcore title. Even though, like I said, do you really fucking want it when you have to, you have to basically work twice as hard as everybody else uh, next week in order to uh, hold on to your title. But uh, that's why, that that's the kind of wrestlers we have here in Let's Cross the Wrestling League. With outside the 1%, they're all very honorable and they're here to fight. Oh, fuck. Uh, Canopal trips over the stairs there. The stretch maker, I think, was wanting to go for something in the corner, but whatever. I guess you're not going to get it. And he goes after the leg. Fresh maker lifting up Canopal. Fresh maker has controlled the majority of this match. And now, oh, hits a nice hit. Scissors. And, oh, fuck. Canopal legs just bounced off of those stairs. Could be it. There's two. Oh, Canopal kicks out at two. I was going to say, I don't think Knopel's really done much for the last few minutes here. Which, of course, can be very dangerous. We've seen that before where someone is getting the shit kicked out. Earlier tonight, we saw that. Fucking Draven was getting the shit kicked out of him. And then he was able to get his... Um, I've been told the finisher is actually called the Moonshine Splash. He's able to get... Oh, we might be seeing Omega Driver here. He turns him over. Here comes an Omega Driver. There it is. That could be it. He goes for the pin. Will he retain the title? There's one, two, and three. That's it. Freshmaker ends any kind of hope that Knopel has at holding two titles at once, at least for this time. Freshmaker now has the chance of that honor himself. If he and Bubblegum are able to win the tag titles next week, he will be the first person to hold two titles simultaneously. There's that... Uh, I keep wanting to call it the seven year itch. A shooting star press. He almost won it there. Referee didn't get down in time, in my opinion. Didn't end up mattering in the end. But Knopel, he just was not on top of his game this match. He had a, a few offensive moves, as we're, as we're seeing right here. But Freshmaker, I mean, definitely did most of the damage tonight. Definitely uh, controlled the match. And as a result, he is still the hardcore champion. Here was that one of the head scissors where Knopel actually, yeah, more than just his legs, he went right up against those stairs, catching them pretty hard. Didn't end it there, though. And instead, here was that Omega Driver, that very dangerous, deadly Omega Driver, which we've seen in many a match and win Freshmaker some championships. And tonight, it helped him defend the championship. This was our last Friday this season. We'll see you next week for our last pay-per-view, Final Blow.